is absolutely it's fun and it's funny um, because we're trying to do something that and, and learn in, in a type of field that nobody has ever been really have done it well, right. so to speak. You know, um, there is no, no one out there that's like, hey, I'm the best mom or the best dad and everybody's emulating that kind of style or anything like that. So it's always like a learning thing. And when it comes to the role, I, I personally believe that every single parent not necessarily focus so much on like parenting a child, but more so as in making themselves better because it, you can tell a child to do something all day long and they still pretty much will like do the opposite of what you're trying to make them do. Right. Um, so, you know, you are going to get them to do so more of what you're doing because children emulate what you do. Right. Um, that's how they learn. They learn you're the first person or the first people or, or group, their network, um, social structure of what they're getting all their information from, from birth. Mm -hmm. So I believe that parents should constantly be in a mindset of growth and in personal development because you can't preach something you're not practicing right i mean you, you just you just can't um and and children will will see right through that but you also got to understand as well the that your whatever it is that your children see you're doing they're going to do it and they're going to and it's going to be exaggerated right so you have to be very mindful of that so it takes a lot of self-awareness um in preparation as far as that role because think about it like this Look at the way you are. Look at how you sit. Look at how you speak. Look at the things that you do and the things that you don't do. Look at how you stand. And then later on, you'll see other people will look at your children and be like, wow, you have the mannerisms of your parents. Yeah, you they, hear that a lot. A lot, right? Right. You know, even some of the facial expressions that you have, like smirking or the way you smile, or you might do some kind of weird thing with your eyes, and you, all of a sudden that ends up being passed down to your kids, and your kids end up doing the same thing because they, they see you do it, mm -hmm. you know? So you have to be very mindful of that. So as far as the role, you, as a parent, and this is me specific, and I, you know, some people may disagree with me, and that's fine because, again, no one is going to have the, the perfect cookie cutter strategy on raising children. No right. one's going to have that. Well, the funny okay. thing is the, that's one of the things I think our school systems are lacking. You know, yeah. they're not teaching you how to be a good parent. You know, you kind of just right. have to figure it out on your own. Right. Right. And a lot of times when you, what you're doing is you're kind of taking things of, from how you were brought up, you know, some of the right. things that your parents did to you and right. what you do a lot of the times is you'll take the good things that they did and to kind of leave out some of the bad things that they, they did. Right. You know, um, as far as like disciplining and stuff like that. Cause I tell you what, when I was a kid, I got my butt whipped quite a bit. I, yeah. I, I would tell my mom, like my mama come on here. So, Oh yeah, yeah. I tear, I tear that butt up. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, she was, me she too. would tell you all yeah. of us, you know what I mean? And she never spared the rod and she raised six boys, six. Wow. Okay. And to this day, I'm 36, I'll be 37 next month. I, and I have never in my entire life have yelled at my mom, right. have told my mom I wasn't going to do something, called her any names, and I would never do that to this day. Right. Okay? Same. I would never do that. And, and it's what's crazy to me is that I see young children doing that to their parents now, and the parents allow it to happen. Right. I, that blows my mind. Yep. You know, I've, that absolutely blows my mind. Yep. You know what I mean? So you have to, as a parent, you have to create the atmosphere in your household that's going to be conducive to the growth of your children. And that has to be an atmosphere um, in yourself where it, it involves, you know, joy, care, love, and discipline. It has to be a mixture of that. And if you, if you do that, then generally the kids are going to grow up fine. Okay. You can't go one way to an extreme as far as being too disciplined and you can't be the other way to an extreme and be too permissive. It's right. just, you can't do that because there's, 
some aspects of those styles that are going to have good qualities, but then there's a very big drawback on the other side of that same thing. So it needs a balance. Right. Um, so in my opinion, you know, my got my job as a, as a dad first is to make sure that I raise my kids to be respectful human beings when they grow up and that if there's any obstacles that come their comes their way, they're able to handle those obstacles and still live on and drive on further and not fall into some sort of depressive state to where they just give up on life or give up on anything else because they've never been taught how to go through adversity and, and deal with these situations. Yep. I, I need to prepare my kids for life. If I don't do it, life is going to do it. Life and is in life is relentless. Right. So it is life, my job. Life is no mercy. I mean, no, look, at, look at what we're going through today. Right. And everybody is getting kicked in the throat right now, yep. you know, because again, we're Americans are spoiled. I, <laughs> I hate to say it. You know what I mean? We're very spoiled. Um, and, you know, we have all these different, you know, we're entitled, you right. know, there's a lot of entitlement there. And then all of a sudden the entire, the entire world got dropped to his knees by a flu virus. Right. The entire economy of the entire world has been dropped. Right. You know, and you know, it's life. It, it happens. It, you know, we might get hit again in 10 years. Right. You never know. But, you know, you just got to kind of learn from it and pick up from it. And that's, and that's what it's all about. This is what we have to prepare our kids for because they're the next generation that's going to be driving the world after us. Right. And you see that, you know, from my experience, I see so many, you know, kids outside of here. You know what I mean? Uh, the kids, my kids, you know, my students, because I, I don't have any children of my own, but I, when I say kids, I mean my students. Mm -hmm. um, they know how to deal with adversity. But kids right. outside of here, you know, I hear crazy stories or people I talk to or whatever, crazy stories of, you know, when, when kids deal with a problem, a problem comes to, you know, in front of them, they don't know how to deal with it and they break down so right. bad, you know, emotionally. Sometimes they hurt themselves physically. Mm -hmm. Because they don't know how to deal with a simple problem because they were never prepped for it. Right. And there, and there could be a reason behind that in a certain kind of parenting style. Right. You know, and I think we may get into that um, here in a, a little bit. So, like, I want to go back to what you said about, you know, you know, you want your kids to emulate, emulate you, right? Yes. So... And you said you always have to personal, you know, you have to develop personally all the time. So mm -hmm. what do you say to those uh, parents that, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working full time job, you know, I'm raising kids, you know, maybe they're maybe, you know, their husband or wife is not around anymore. You know, they're single parents, uh, you know, and they're just like, you know, how am I supposed to work on myself when I'm always concentrating on my kids or, or whatever, or work or whatever, how can you, they work on themselves? You know, where can they find the time and things like that? Okay. And you know what? And that's a good question. Cause you know, time is, is, is a big factor in a lot of people's lives because you do a lot. So that's why I wanted you on this call <laughs> because I'm like, if, if anyone is a good role model to another parent, it should be you because you have, you have your hand in so many different things on top of being a husband, being a, being a father and things like that. Yeah. Um, with me, I'm always, if, if I'm not in a, in a state of learning something new or, or personally developing myself in a way, I feel like I'm being, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird to me because I'm so used to always working towards something or, in putting it into some, something into my mind and you know and, and there's so much negativity in this world that oh wait hold on I, one second um your mic might be off nobody can mic? hear your mic no you can hear me though i could hear you yeah hmm hold on a second and this is also recording as well so it'd be able to go as well i'm wondering if it's because i have my earplugs in uh, hold on one sec. Okay. I'm going to message someone to see if it's working. Okay.
So just start talking, Errol. Just start talking? Yeah. Testing, testing, can you hear me now? You still can't hear me? Hold on. No, I, test, I, test, I, test. I could hear. That's weird. No, they can't hear you. All right, let me see yeah. this here. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me, Sensei? Yeah, I could hear you, but I guess the crowd can't. Testing, testing, testing. Test, test, test. Okay, yeah, that might have been it. So I guess we got to talk without, without earphones. <laughs> okay, we'll have to make do. Um, hopefully, oh, I mean, I, I, we, they just missed like 10 minutes of good conversation. <laughs> well, it's, this, it's recording, so would it, would it be able to be posted later as yeah. well? Okay, yeah. perfect. So, yeah. all right, cool. So, um, so as far as like time management and figuring out how to um, better personally develop myself and, um, you know, manage my time, especially like I say, if you're like a single parent um, who's working full time, has to really tend to the kids all, a lot and you don't really get a lot of time to yourself. That was the question. Right. Um, and, you know, me being able to do all that, with all the stuff going on in my life. Um, first off, what. And, and like I said, I was like, I have an issue with me. Like if I'm not personally, constantly doing something that's personally developing me, I feel weird about it. Like if I'm not in a process of growth, I feel very weird um, because that's just been a habit of mine for a very long time. But for those people who have an issue with time, yeah, I understand, you know, it's, it's tough, you know, but um, while the kids are at school um, and let's say you're working, you right. may have to incorporate that time in, in your commute. You know, I listen to podcasts or YouTube, motivational YouTube videos or, or something um, along those lines or audiobook or something like that on my way to work. Right. You know? Or if I'm sitting at work, like at a desk and I'm typing or I'm doing something on a computer, I have my headphones into the computer and playing a YouTube podcast or something like that in the background while I'm listening as I'm working. Right listening to it as I'm working. Um, sometimes I'll be able to have headphones in as I'm walking around or whatever and, and listen to that stuff um, while I'm you know, multitasking, doing something else with my hands, um, just to um, at least feed my mind with stuff um, that's positive. Um, so I have the commute. Um, if the kids are watching a movie, you know, I, I could be there with them, but, um, maybe I'm doing something of some sort of learning right there next to them while they're watching TV. Um, you know, and I don't do that all the time because, you know, you want to be involved with the kids, you know, as far as you're doing like a movie night or something like that, you don't want to be doing something else while they're doing that. You want to kind of be engaged with it with them. But, um, you know, sometimes you may have to sacrifice a little of that mm -hmm. to, to, to get where you need to go. Um, right before bed, you know what I mean? You might need to take a half hour, or maybe an hour out of your sleep time on the back end to learn something or to listen to some things, or you may need to just get up early and listen to some things and, and, and do things like, um, so, you know, sometimes I would get up um, because I never had time to go to the gym. Right. So I get up at five o'clock in the morning before work to go to the gym. I, that's something I just had to do. You know what I mean? But yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, <laughs> Is it urgent? <laughs> <laughs> Is it urgent? Yep, we're live. <laughs> One of the kids, like, you know, lost a leg or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I just, I just would find time here and there just to, um, you know, just figure it out. You know what I mean? Right. We, we all have 24 hours in a day. You may have, like I said, you might have to sacrifice sleep, you know, just to do what you got to do or, you know, hey, 
you get six, five, six hours. The Arnold Schwarzenegger said, you just got to sleep fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just got to do it. Um, but that's what I did. Um, every little bit of time that I had, I, I, like I figured out how to just incorporate it into my life. Right. You just got to be creative. Cleaning the house. Right. You know, nobody's in the house or whatever. You have everybody doing chores. You're cleaning the house. Throw some headphones in. If you got uh, Alexa, you got Google, Google Home, play it and stream it through there and loud. So that way you can be multitasking, doing household stuff. Or if you're, you know, doing some stuff in the, in the garage or something like that, or even, even during your workouts, like I would listen to that stuff during my workouts. Um, that's just multitasking stuff. Like it's, that's how I. Awesome. So, um, I, I know a lot of parents struggle with this. Like how, how can they, you know, with all the stuff that's going on today, right? It, we're like, everybody's going through this issue. You know what I mean? Everyone uh, in our country with the whole COVID-19, like how have you been able to manage the kids? Like how, do, how can you get them on a steady routine with all this stuff going on like right now? Like what are you guys doing? It's, it's honestly, it's really hard to get them on a routine because nobody really knows what we can and can't do. Right. Like, it's always you know changing I mean? by the day. You know what I mean? You always get these updates and it's like, okay, well, you, you know, gyms are closed. Cause like right, right before they closed the gym, we were like, all right, we're going to go to the pool. And you know, we spent the day at the pool and then the next day, no gym. Right. You know? So, you know, we try to get somewhat creative with that. And honestly, what we're going through now, you just, you're just going to have to plan ahead. Um, with our kids, we were, we have 50 50 custody between you know the other parents right so you know we'll have a couple of days with them a couple of days without them and then you know we alternate weekends so depending on what weekend or what days that we have we'll try to figure out some sort of activity so like, we got the kids back today um after they were gone for five days so tonight you now we get what they get in um i cook burgers so my thing was all right i'm gonna cook burgers today so i, I cook burgers and then we're gonna watch a movie so, um, so right at, before I came on this call, I put a movie up for them to watch while I do this. And then I'm going to go back up. We're going to have like a little movie thing together as a family. Um, we are trying to take everyone off of the technology, like the cell phones, being on the computer, watching YouTube videos and stuff, and try to do things as a family. And because if you think about it, you look, most people are nowadays, kids have cell phones. Right. You know, and everybody's just doing this. They'll be yep. sitting next to each other um, in the living room or wherever, and everybody knows it's in a cell phone, you know, and you're not getting any kind of quality time as a family that way. So um, so we try to figure out family activities, whether it's, you know, board games or even doing, like, educational style of uh, computer training, like ABC Mouse. Um, or I think there's another one, it's like Genius Academy or something like that, because they're not going to school. So we'll do something like that. We printed out um, school-like work, worksheets for each one for their grades. So they're doing math, they're doing uh, English and reading and like writing stuff. Um, because, you know, Ashley went on a website and just pulled a lot of stuff out. It's like, all right, first, you know, when you get up, you know, you brush teeth, make your bed, you can do whatever chores you got, homework. You know, and then like the school has like a list of things right. of objectives that they have that they send home to everybody. And we're trying to at least do something within those objectives as well um, to help accommodate that. But, you know, we go out, we go on walks. Um, I go down into the garage and like I do calisthenics and we try to pull them in there with me to go do that. Um, or we'll go down to the, we'll walk down to the playground that's like up the road and then we all go out there. And it's like only a few families out there. So it's not a lot of people. Right. So that way they can have something to do there as well. But, right. you know, we try to go outside and do stuff. Okay, cool. Um, so one thing I definitely want to talk about that I'm sure every parent is wondering, like, disciplining. Okay. So I think, I think your kids are pretty well behaved, you know, um, sometimes you say otherwise. <laughs> you're, sometimes you're like, ah, oh, sensei, like, <laughs> These kids are driving me up a wall, you know, um, but 
but I think they're, I think, oh, there, there's one of them right there. <laughs> so, um, and William was a student of mine, right? Yes. Um, so, like, what's your style of disciplining? Because one thing I, I, I personally don't like, and it's my opinion, I hate when parents bargain with their kids. Oh my gosh. You know, I don't, I don't know if you do that, but I, I, and I, and I try to let them know like, Hey, like that's not, I, I, and I know I'm not a parent. Right. But I just know from growing up, like my parents would never bargain with me. Like right. you know, it's their way or it's no way. You know what I mean? Right. It's right. not, it's not a, uh, you know, it's, it, we like I like to say it was it was, it was a, com, a communist country in my house, right? <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, like I don't like I don't like the whole bargaining uh, the, the thing when they bargain like, hey, you know, if, if you're good, you know, we'll we'll take you to Rita's, you know what I mean? Right. Um, I, I think that's good once in a while, but not like every single time, you know what right. I mean? So, like, what what do you do? I agree with you 100%. And do you want me to like maybe? kind of get into the, like a parenting kind of styles when it comes to this as well? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so I, I agree with you 100% on the bargaining thing. Um, you got, and I don't know if a lot of parents know this, and maybe they do, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. Children are the biggest manipulators on the planet. <laughs> and they are master manipulators and they know this. So when it comes to the whole bargaining thing, like I, there's no bargaining with me. Like, absolutely not. Because if I say one thing and then they don't want to do it, and if I bribe them with something, then they're going to continue that same behavior because they know they're going to get re rewarded um, for their bad behavior to correct it. And then right. they'll correct it at the time to get what they want and they go back to doing the same thing again. So the problem never becomes fixed. So I'll never bargain that way with my kids, ever. So. But let's let's get into that because you, you said like your parents were like very like very strict, right? Um, so, and, but they might not have been one hundred percent completely strict. There could be a, a mixture of, you know. It was more like my parents like they had like this look, and if you got the look, you knew you were in trouble. You know what right. I mean? Or you know, it wasn't. You know, because video games were a big thing, you know, when we were growing up too, you know, yep. but it was, it was more like Super Nintendo or things like that, right? Or, right, we didn't have the online connect with your buddy kind of thing. Right. So it was more like, all right, we're taking away the video games for, you know, several weeks. It wasn't like, oh, we're taking the video games away for a day. Right. No, we're taking the video games away for several weeks and they would take, take the, you know, the system and rip it out of the TV, you know what I mean? And take yeah. it to their room. Right. I had happened to me so oh my god I had it so many times. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there is no leaving it there, no plan. No, you got the whole thing taken away. Yeah, and the funny part is then you know you got the whole thing taken apart, and then you're like, that's it, I'm leaving, I'm I'm yeah. leaving the house. <laughs> you know, you pack a bag and you put like you know, you know, one pair of clothes and like all your other toys, and you're like, I'm leaving, I'm running away, right? And then you're like, wait, where am I gonna go? <laughs> and then not only that, and then like you'll do that, and like my mom would be like, "All right, see you." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's like, "Bye." <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That's funny, but but yeah. So like, so from what I've learned, there's like three parenting styles, okay. And then there's there's good sides to them, and then there's also bad sides to them. Well, the third one is actually the best form of parenting, and it, but it, you know it's a balance. So you have like the authoritarian kind of um, parenting style where it's like drill sergeant. Like it's my way or the highway. There is no ex uh, exceptions. You're going to do what I say right now. That's it. The problem with that one is there is no like, um, there is no like set way into getting into helping the kids with their emotional needs or whatever needs that they have. You're very emotionless. Right. Um, the problem with that is that you're going to have, well, the good part of it, you'll have well-behaved kids. The problem is that they're going to be afraid of you, afraid of breaking rules, and they're going to be very, very socially awkward later in life. Okay. 
because you don't give them the opportunity to go out and be adventurous or, you know, to have a little bit of independence. They're going to be so, fo- they're going to be so needing someone to tell them what to do. Right. Because it's really not. So there's no independence. Um, and, and that's a not so good parenting style because it, it causes your children to not want to be close to you. Okay. And that's the issue. Now, and then you have one that's on the opposite side of the spectrum where you have a permissive parent. And think about the permissive parent as like Homer Simpson, who just lets his kids do whatever. He just does not care. Right. There isn't like, he'll be like, Bart, go to your room. You know what I mean? And then like Bart does whatever in his room. And like, I don't care. You know what I mean? I do whatever. And then he'll come out and do, you know what I mean? So with a permissive parent, it's like they have, the kids have their in- independence. They're able to be adventurous. You are very uh, providing of their emotional needs and stuff like that. However, you don't enforce very much much rules and there's almost no punishment for um, any kind of bad behavior or anything like that. And what that does is it causes kids to um, kind of blame their their lack of success on their parents. although they become very socially adept, but they're very underachieving. So like, um, if there's something difficult at school, they don't go out to try to overachieve for that difficult thing. They just kind of sit back and be like, ah, it's whatever, I'm not that good or whatnot, or because they've been given everything. Right. You know what I mean? There isn't any kind of uh, a discipline there. Um, and that, and that's um, that kind of parenting style. So, it, you know, it's, Either you be too much of giving, and, and this is what I always say about the whole permissive part of it, is that you can't give your kids everything that they want. You just can't, um, because life isn't going to give them everything they want, you know? So there's got to be some sort of discipline there. Right. Um, but and then you have- I, I, don't, I don't really like, i sorry to cut you off, but that's why I don't like uh, participation awards. Right, same here. Because not, you know, you're not always going to win with everything you do. Like- I can't tell you how many times, you know, I failed throughout life and I'm still failing per se, you know, I'm still failing, but, you know, luckily these haven't been huge failures where my life comes crumbling down. Right. Mm -hmm. But they've been failures where I learned from them and and like, okay, that was a good lesson. Now let me, let me not do that again. You know, that was lesson learned type of thing, you know? Right. Right. You know, and, and that's what it comes out. Like the, the kids won't be persistent in achieving anything on top of that. Because again, like, like for instance, like if you have a parent that comes into school and the kid doesn't want to be in school, it's like, I don't want to go out there. And the parent's like, you know, go out, go, go do this, right? And then they cry enough and the parent's like, oh, okay, come on. Like that's setting your child up for, for failure later on in life. Right. You know, it's like, hey, you know what? It may be uncomfortable now, but once you get in there, you get started, you'll be fine. You just got to get over that initial part of the unknown, so to speak. And, you know, as an adult, I handle that. I do the same thing. It's like, man, first time doing something, I'm like, man, I don't know. I'm like, I'm nervous. But what's the difference between me and maybe somebody who's been given everything in their life is I take that as a, on as a challenge. It's like, all right, I might not be used to or comfortable doing that. But I'm going to take this challenge on and put myself in an uncomfortable situation because what it's going to do is going to make me tougher. Right. And after I'm done doing it, I'm going to be like, all right, I know what it's like going and like say going to people to speak, you know, all right, I'm okay with it because I've done it. And that's not so bad. You know, same thing. I, I'm, I want to go skydiving one day. I know I'm going to be scared, crapless, but you know, once I get that first initial fear of what it feels like free falling, then the second time is going to be like, all right, cool. I'm comfortable with that. I'm not going to, it's not going to bother me as much because now I know what it feels like and what to expect. You know what I mean? So, and then you have the third parenting style that is the authoritative parent. So that's the difference. I mean, it's not authoritarian like the drill sergeant, but authoritative. And what it is, is it's a balance between the authoritarian and the permissive. So you still have, and, and you have the good qualities of those. So you still have a structure you still have the discipline. You still have the, hey, the rules um, are in place. You are going to conform to those rules, but you're also warm with your kids. So think of it as like, uh, I, it's a, a book I read too. It's called The Man of Steel and Velvet. Um, 
you have to still be rigid and strict in certain aspects of, of the parenting style, but you also have to learn how to take that steel and make it velvet and become soft so that way your children are going to be, be willing to come to you and be able to know that if they come to you, you'll still nurture them, but they know that they can't just get away with everything with you. Um, right. You, you still enforce discipline, um, but then you're also loving at the same time. Right. So if I discipline the kids for something, like, uh, and I'll give you an example, like Ava, like if I, she gets sent to her room or something like that, right? And I always, um, I, I would, <laughs> it's so funny, because like I would go up there and I'd be like, so why are you up here? And, and, this, and, and another thing I don't like is if I, if I tell the kids, hey, go. One thing is, don't ask me why. Right. You know, don't, don't ask me why, just right. go and do what I told you. To you're do. the boss. Right. Um, you're not, you, you don't question me. Right. Um, you know, and the, the funny thing is they say that, but they know the reason why. They know exactly why they get punished and sent to their room or whatever. So later, and, that's, and, and I reinforced it with this because they'd be like, why, right? And I go up there and I'm like, why are you up here? And if they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, all right, stay up here and think about it and I'll be, I'll be back or I'll call you back. So now I go back downstairs and then, you know, I sit up there for a couple more minutes and be like, okay, I'm ready. You know, <laughs> so I come, up here, I come upstairs and they're like, so I'm like, well, why are you up here? And then they finally be like, you know, cause it, it'd be something stupid or whatever. Or like right. I wasn't listening or whatever. And I'm, they know, like they know why. You don't have to explain it to them. They know. Um, and then I'll be like, okay, so, you know, well, why did you do that? And, you know, it's like, they'll be like, well, I don't know, or this and that. I'm like, I oh, so don't tell me, I don't know. Give me an explanation. Like, talk to me, you know? And then eventually I'll get an explanation. I'm like, I'm like, do you think I like doing this? Do you think I like sending you up to your room? And they're like, well, no. I said, but you know, I have to when you're bad, right? Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they, they know. You know, and that's another thing. So I'll be like, all right, well, come over here, give me a hug, give me a kiss, you know what I mean? And give the hug and the kiss and all that. And I'm like, I don't like punishing you, but I said, but if you're bad, what happens? I get punished. I was like, okay, then. So don't do anything that's going to cause you to get punished, right? Yes. You know, and then, you know, you go back downstairs or whatever and, you know, they keep doing their thing. But, um, but there's different, like, there's different, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, you just got to have a balance between the two. And if you think about it, those kids who have the balance where they have the nurturing the velvet the soft side of you plus the rigid strict side of you as well are usually the ones that are socially adept children these are the same ones that end up becoming more goal-oriented they're more positive they're more confident in themselves and they're a lot sociable all because they're getting every as every good aspect of both parenting styles but when you have the ones that are just one way or the other, you see the negative sides of those parenting styles. Right. So you got to have a balance. And, you know, I'm no perfect parent. I'm, and honestly, if, if you think you're perfect, you're wrong. You, you got to constantly, you're on a learning, you're learning every day. You're constantly growing and you're constantly adapting to the situation as you go every single day. Because nothing's ever really the same. Right. You know, so you got to constantly you know, move with that same, that, that change like that. So, and as far as like the, the punishment and the different things that I do, I'm, I don't spank my kids a lot, but I don't, one thing I won't do is, is that say, I will never spank my kids. That, that's, I don't see anything wrong with spanking your kids. Right. I mean, and I think there's a lot of people out that out there like that, you know, um, yeah. that probably have spanked their kids maybe once or something like that, right. you know, yeah, which, and that's which is fine. Same, yeah, and it's the same thing. Think of it like 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 how law enforcement has an escalation of force, like mm -hmm. a force continuum. You know, the difference with that is police officers don't have to start from the bottom and then work their way up. If you meet it from whatever kind of threat is happening, but when it comes to like the parenting, all right, cool. If I ask you to do something, you don't do it. I might yell at you for it, and then that might do the trick. You know, if that works stick with it. You may not have to spank anyone. Maybe just you raising your voice a little bit may work. You know what I mean? Some kids they may not, that may not work for. So, okay, well, maybe sending them to their room, maybe sending them to their room might work. I know with Ava, Ava has a very sociable type of personality. She likes to be the center of attention. I know that because I 
kind of sort of learned a little bit about personality styles. I know her personality is she wants to be the, 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 the party, the per, you know, person that's just everybody's looking at. Right. But when I send her butt to her room, she's isolated. She's by herself. And that, she, she cannot stand that. She right. doesn't like to be alone. So that sometimes will do the trick. If that doesn't work, you may have to take it to a different level. And sometimes what I have to do is make them do exercises. Right. You know, they might end up doing push-ups. They might do burpees. They might do wall sits. You know, they might do jumping jacks. You know, whatever it may be, planks, something. Sometimes that gets a trick done. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it may even get to the point where they got to get their butt spanked. And a lot of times the butt, the spanking works. You know? Right. But the thing about that, it's quick and it's over with. And right. what I do if I ever have to spank my kids is like, oh, you got to, you go over there and, and give them a hug and a kiss. Like, do you, do I like doing this? No. Okay. But levels of your behavior is going to have a certain level of discipline behind it. Right. You know, and they understand that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and I don't mean like beat your kid. Like I mean, when I got my butt spanked, I got my butt spanked. I had extension yeah. cords. Yep. Um, I got the belt. Under. Yep. <laughs> Shoes, yep. belt, candles, all, all of yep. that stuff. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? But you look at me today and, you know, I have, everything I have is mine. You know, I'm a very big overachiever of what I like to do in, in life. I'm always striving to become better every day. I mean, look, I have a library of books. I'm like always on a constant growth. I'm always trying to learn something and improve myself. And those are all personal development? Yeah, personal development. I don't think I have a single nonfiction book in here. Yeah, I don't think I have a single nonfiction book. Um, all personal development or, or sorry, fiction book. Okay. Um, I have a yeah. single fiction book. I, I knew exactly um, what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, because that's, that's how I was brought up. Like my mom, anytime I fell down, my mom never, all, never had to pick me up. Like I, she'd always be like, get up. And I would get up. If you look at the whatever it is it is, all right, you're good. All right, keep it moving. Right. If I had something like with a relationship with a girlfriend or whatever, and you know, I broke up. Like, mom, I'm crying. Ma, ma, she broke up with me. You know what I mean? She's like, right. all right, baby, you're good. I, I, hey, get back up. You're going to be all right. Keep it going. You know what I mean? You, you'll be right. fine. You know? Like, she never coddled me. My mother right. never called it, coddled me. But I know she was always there as my backbone if I needed it. Right. You know? It's funny. Uh, whenever... Uh, this is a different situation, but whenever, uh, say, a, a kid gets uh, uh, falls here or something, you know, let's say, you know, they're sparring and they get kicked and they fall, right? Yep. Some of the parents, right, if it's their first few times, like, sparring or whatever, they'll be like, oh, my God, little Johnny. Like, you know, they make a big deal about it. Yeah, and yeah. then the kid is fine until he looks at mom and then starts crying. Yeah. And we always say kids uh, are invincible unless you feed into it right yeah so anytime you know we have a kid you know say you know he gets kicked and falls right we don't make a big deal about it because if we don't make a big deal about it he's not going to make a big deal about right. it. right so, absolutely yeah well i and you know what's crazy about that i remember being upstairs we were doing something me and ashley were in the girls room and ava came in and she turned around and then all of a sudden she swung her head back really really fast and just straight face planted the edge of the door I mean, she hit the side of that door, the edge, like the hard edge, oh. the forehead, so hard. Like, I looked at Ashley and I was like, "Don't you say anything." <laughs> I like, look, I'm like, I'm like, just like this. I looked at, I'm like, mm -hmm. she. Ava looked at me. Ava looked at her. Ava looked at me again. Looked at her. She grabbed. She rubbed the forehead like this right here. Started laughing and then kept it moving. Yeah, yeah. That's how and they are. She had a big knot on her head yep. boy like this but because we didn't make a big deal about it she was fine right oh right. yeah that's great. <laughs> that's great so um i guess um to recap what you everything you were just talking about um is there any like skills or tactics like you think like a parent can try to develop or work on with their kids like to help them with the discipline? Um, it's, it's, that's so tough to say because some people's value systems are different. Okay. Um, 
Well, just saying, like, say if they had the same, same, say we have a few people that are like, wow, yeah, like, I really like your parenting style. Can you give them, like, some skills or tactics to, you know, work on discipline with their kids? If, if anything, I would, I would, well, first off, you got to see what, what your value system is. Like, right. you can't compromise um, your value system. If there's something that you believe in as far as, like, teaching your kids respect um that, that should be the first thing is, is respecting you respecting themselves and respecting other people um and, and teaching them the golden rule um that that's paramount and, it, and you know and as far as like reinforcing that um it, it it all comes down to really showing them how they should be through your actions yeah like i know uh you use the seven magic words with them all the time yeah, they're like the I'm a big, seven, seven magic words we teach here. You, yeah. you, 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 you try to make them use them as well. Yes. Yes, yeah. sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Please, thank you, and you're welcome. Yes. Yeah. And, and and when and when they do, a lot of the people on the outside will look be looking in and be like, "Wow, you have very, very good, respectful kids." Yeah. You know, that's you know that's one way, mm -hmm. um, one way of, of of instilling that into the kids. But as far as like the discipline side of things is that you have to be consistent. That's, that's one thing you need to do is be consistent. Um, if there's two of you, two parents, you, one parent can't, can't go over the decision of the other parent. Right. That, that is a big no. Yep. Like, and, I, and I think we were talking about this the other day. Like I was telling you, uh, my, like if I got in trouble, like by my mom, I couldn't go to my dad and be like, dad, can I get my video games back? You know, cause right. mom took them away from me, you know, earlier today or yesterday. He'd right. be like, even if he might not agreed with it, you mm -hmm. know, why she punished me or vice versa. It could have been my dad that punished me and I'm going to my mom. Right. If maybe they didn't agree on it, didn't matter. They're like, sorry, that was, that was your mom's decision or sorry, that was your dad's decision. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to undermine them, you know? Right. Yeah, never, never undermine the other parent. Um, yep. And and if you do have a rule, like you, you can't stick with the rule while you're both there. And then when one goes away, the rule can be broken. Right. Like that, because, you know, again, the kids are going to, are going to know that, you know what I mean? So there had, like I said, consistency is a big thing when it comes to uh, the rules and the discipline in the house. You have to be consistent. If you're not, if you're wishy-washy, the kids are going to be wishy-washy. Hmm. I know that he or she wanted to do something like this. So I need to stay within this, but then now they've lightened up a little bit and maybe I can dab my toe in there to see if I can get away with it this time. And you know what I mean? And kids are going to always test you. Kids 100% are going to continuously test the waters. And if you're consistent, it'll, it'll lower that a lot. Um, but you got to feel what's more like what's comfortable for you as far as the discipline is concerned. If you're like a person that's like, I'm never spanking my kids, then you just got to figure it out. Like a different way of being able to, to get to your kids as far usually, as like, usually you just got to take away what they like. True. Um, With us, when we were growing up, you took away outside. We were devastated. Yeah. We're, you know, now, it, now it's a lot of the video games and the TV and the tablets yeah. and the cell phones. But the, the problem I see you know, a lot, especially being in, you know, a martial arts instructor to a lot of kids is they'll only take the, the cell phone away for a few hours or, yeah, see, that's, that's, or maybe that's, like, or maybe even 24 hours. Right. 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 And when I had my stuff taken away, it was weeks or maybe a month. Yep. You know what I mean? If I got, you know, say I came home with a D or something like that, you know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, depending on the school, the, the kids get different grades. They don't get A, B, C's and D's anymore. Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, if I came home with a D or whatever, I would, my, my video game system was gone for a month, you know? Right. So it, that was devastating. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or I couldn't go outside for a month. That was, that, that was even more devastating. You right. know, you're, you're, you're looking outside and you're watching all your friends playing outside and you can't go outside, you know? Right. So, and that, and that's another thing parents need to really be mindful of is like, these kids can handle a lot of stuff. You can't think for one second that, you know, you can't go and let's say take away their cell phone for a month and be right. like, Oh, that's, that's too much. I'm like, well, is it really too much? Or if you take it away for one day, 
they're going to be good for one day and then go back to what they were doing after that. You need yep. to learn. They need, you need to send a message to your kids that if they do something wrong, it's not going to be easy. Um, as far as like getting whatever it is back. Right. Like, my thing with taking away things is I don't like giving a time. I don't want to give you a time because I don't want you to be good in that time frame. And then all of a sudden you get it. But once you get it back, you go back to being your old way. <laughs> I want you to personally within yourself want to work for whatever it is I took away from you. If you work for it, you show me within a few hours that you deserve it back. I will give it back to you in those few hours, but I'm not going to tell you it's gone for a few hours so you can be good in those few hours. And right. then get it back and go back to doing. No, I don't like doing that. I want you to learn how to earn back what it is you want. And that's later on. Hey, you want something really bad? You're going to work for it. Right. Well, show me you want it by working for it. You might, they, they might go and start doing chores that they don't even need to do because they want to get it back. Right. <laughs> like, like, that's what I want to see. And if I see you busting out chores, you're not really assigned to do. I'm like, well, shucks, man. All right, cool. You, you showing me you work here. You can have it back. Cool. Right, my man. You know, so that's that's what I do. I don't, I don't like giving time frames on these these five minute timeouts and stuff, or the minute per age mess. I man, safe spaces <laughs> like this whole safe space stuff in schools and, and man, that life doesn't have a safe space. That's I'm true. sorry, life will not have a safe space. Life will kick you in the throat, sit there, look at you, laugh at you, and say, "Okay, what are you going to do now?" Right. You know, there is no safe space. You, they got to learn how to overcome adversity and overcome challenges. And uh, you, you're going to get, uh, there is no matter of if, it's going to be when they get kicked in the throat by life. Are they going to be able to pick themselves up and dust themselves off and keep on moving on? I get, I got a lot of people over the past, you know, week or two, you know, they're like, I can't believe you're still kind of, you know, you're still pretty much running your school. Like, you know, that, you know, we were the first to get shut down. Gyms, you know, uh, martial arts studios, things like that. You know, other martial arts studios closed down. You know, they're just like, you know, close the doors, you know. You know, and I figured out a way to keep classes going. And people were like, I can't believe, like, you know, you, you're, you're, your perseverance is, like, exceptional, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's not, like, yeah, like, I'd like to persevere, but I didn't think about it that way. It's like, as soon as a problem hits, I think, what's the solution? How can we work around that to, you know, to fix the problem, right? And I, right. I think a lot of people lack those skills, you know, instead, some, a lot, I think a lot of people will just shut down, right? And just say, and just take it, you know, I'm not a person that's willing to just accept it. I'm going to keep doing what, I, what I'm doing. Um, Obviously, if it, if it brings positivity, right? Uh, right. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and nothing's going to stop me from doing it. You know what I mean? I'm going I'm to figure out a way to do it. Right. So. Yeah, that's an entrepreneur, entrepreneur's mind there. <laughs> Thanks. Like you learn, you adapt and overcome. They teach, they teach that in the military too. You, you adapt and overcome. Sorry. <laughs> so speaking of adapting and overcoming, let's, uh, let's switch gears. Let's talk a little bit about martial arts. Okay. Um, so, you know, you've, you've been at my school for how long now? Like three years, four years? Three and a half. I'm a, well, four years would be November. Okay. Um, so you've been, you've been around for a little while, a little a hot minute. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so, you know, I, we got a lot of adults in here. A lot of adults leave. Um, and I, I think adults are the hardest to teach. Um, so speaking from your point of view and stuff uh and not from an instructor so you got speak more of as like a, a, a student right um what are some of the difficulties uh you know of taking martial arts as an adult and how can an, a regular adult you know or average adult overcome them well i think some of it could be a financial thing. Okay. Um, I think a lot of the biggest issues could be the financial thing. Um, and then trying to manage the time because some people end up either work shift work or they end up having to work during the time frames where there's classes. Right. 
um, you know, because our classes are like in the evening time. And then, you know, some people may work like that right. two to three to 11 or something like that. So that could be an issue with that. Um, but I think from what I've seen the most is that adults come in, they, they, they come for a couple of days or, or maybe a month or so. And then all of a sudden they kind of teeter off a little bit. Right. And I don't know if it's because when they come to class, all you do is come to class at an hour and then that's it. Or maybe they're just there, have a different kind of expectation or something. Like, I, I don't know what it is. All I know is when I can, and I can only speak for myself as a student, um, because again, like right. I had a mindset. How does an average person become like you? Because you, you know, to give a little background on, on everyone who, do, who don't know you, uh, you know, you, you study outside of here, right? right? So you're in the books and, and whatever material I give you, you're in that. Um, you know, you're practicing outside of there. So say you have like, it, you, you know, you have a test coming up uh, in a year. You know, you're still working on techniques at home. Um, you know, uh, when you're here, you know, at the dojo, you, you're taking it seriously. You know, you're taking notes while in class. I can't even tell you how many times I have to t remind everybody to take notes, right? right? Because what we do is not, you know, basic Taekwondo where there's, in Taekwondo, you know, I, I did Taekwondo for 14 years, right? In Taekwondo, there's only so many punches and kicks and that's it, right? And then what you do with them is what makes it cool is you, you're putting it all together and you're making combinations and things like that and you're doing all these crazy flips and, you know, whatever, the, all the movie stuff, you know. But what we do here with the Nimpo and the Japanese Jiu Jitsu, there's just so much involved, right? Um, so I tell everyone, you're not gonna remember everything. I don't, you know, I have to look at my notebook you know, when somebody asks me a question, you know, sensei, how do you do this technique or how do you do this pattern? I have to, you know, I have to look in my notebook, right? right. And I can't tell you how many times like people come in here and they don't even, they don't even have notebooks. They don't even bring pens, you know, nothing. They didn't bring paper. And it's like, sometimes I just, I just let them go to be honest, because I'm, I'm tired of seeing it over and over. So how does like an average student become great? Like, you know, like you, you know, and you know, how, how, how can they be like you? Well, first things first is when they come to the dojo, they got to come to the dojo to, with the, with the purpose to, 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 to learn and to train. Um, I remember when you were, even when I got started, a lot of the basic techniques looked very advanced to me and I was taking those notes down and they were all in the book and I had no idea they were in the book. You know, but I was still taking those notes down because I was like, all right, we're learning this today. Oh, this, I've never seen this before. Let me write this one down, you know, and I come back later on. Like, oh, it's, it's been in the book this whole time. You know what I mean? But um, they have to come in and take it seriously. And I noticed like a lot of people come in just to socialize. And I'm like, well, I'm not here to really socialize and talk. Like I'm here. My, my reason for being here would be, you know, could be different from anybody else's. But my reason is, is that if I ever get into an altercation, I want to know I can take care of myself. I want to know if I can protect my family. And if I need to protect somebody else, I can do that too. Right. You know, that's my purpose of coming in and training. It's, you know, and, and it also helps with like the self-awareness and like the spiritual, spiritual side of things too. Um, but it also, it's part of like setting goals and working towards something bigger. Like, I didn't expect myself to become, you know, when I got become a black belt, all of a sudden being like, oh, wow, this is like, it's more to that. It's like way more than just mm -hmm. the self-defense aspect. Like it's, it's, it's beyond coming in and learning a few techniques. It's, right. it's, you know, it's, it's, people don't understand that. And, um, and, you know, maybe that's something they just don't get. They think it's all you come in, you do techniques or whatever, and then that's it. No, no, it's more than that. Right. But I come in first and foremost, I, I have my books with me. Um, when I would go home, I would go and study those books. You have books for a reason. We didn't have videos like you have videos now on the website. Yeah. I didn't have videos. <laughs> I had to find stuff online and then come to you and be like, hey, does it look like this? <laughs> you know, but I was and, like. And let me cut you off real, uh, real quick. So sometimes I'll upload a video without announcing it. 
so I can see who's actually viewing it. Mm -hmm. I'll see how many views. And some like I, I looked at one the other day. I forget what program it was in. Might have been the sword program. I'm not sure. But I uploaded a new video. I didn't tell anyone. And it had like one view. Yeah. That could have been me. I don't know. It could have been somebody else. I'm not sure. But I'm like, hmm. That means they're not, they're not, they're not looking around, you know? Yeah. And I I just I and I do these little things just to see who's in there, you know, or or if my students are you know, taking advantage of it, you know, taking advantage of what I'm giving them, you know, right. so, but anyway, keep going. <laughs> but like, I come in to the dojo for a purpose and you have to be, well, you got to figure out, and each student has to do this. You have to figure out why you're there. Okay. And then when you come to class, you need to start dissecting ways of getting to where it is you need to go. And I don't think most people do that. I think they just come to class just to show up, come spend an hour there, and then they roll out. They don't know why they're there, really. They have like these different check marks on there. They say, oh, I want self-defense. I want to do working out. Or, you know, I want to sweat. I want to do this. I want to focus. But what is it really? Right. Like, they show up. They're there for an hour or 45 minutes. And then they roll out. And they have no idea why they were even there. Right. You know, when I came to the class, I, I, I was looking. And then I, and then the ad found me and then I showed up and that same day I showed up that first day I signed up. And from then on, like I had, I set, like I set a goal for myself. My goal was to get a black belt in a year. You know, that was my goal. And then it changed into being two black belts in a year. And then six months later, I got the third black belt. And then six months later is two second degree black belts. Right. You know, but that all came with, absolute full hardcore dedication to the craft and to the work i came to class i took my notes i studied i went home i studied the entire curriculum i learned it but the japanese i learned the techniques i came to you any questions i had with you i would ask you hey look at this this is look right this is not look right what can you do to fix it since i want to test i want to do this i want to do that like i was i was at work studying these books i was i was buying the DVDs, looking at it, uh, because we were in a Gimbukan back then, so I was like, right. all the DVDs for the jujitsu, all the DVDs for the sword, all the DVDs for the nimpo, and I was watching, I mean, it's so funny, because like, Ashley would be like, oh my God, we're watching this again, <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I was so like obsessed with, with learning, and when you put in that much work, the, it's gonna show. Right. And, when you look at people's technique and you look at people's testing and all that, you'll see that there was a lack in their, in their practice that right. they just cram right before a test. And it just enough to get by. Like you'll see that I don't want to just get by. I want to excel and exceed the expectation or to my goal is to get a perfect score, you know, but I'm also taking these techniques and how am I applying it to real life? Right. It's, you know, it's funny. Some of my students think I don't notice that they, they, you know, they, they don't start showing up to class until a month before testing or something like that. It's you know? totally noticeable. Like yeah. you, the, for those people who go every day, who are there all the time, yeah. you, you can't fool anybody. Like you'll right. see the same people show up like a couple of weeks before testing or whatever. Hey, can I pretest? And guess what happens? They don't pass their pretest because they haven't been there for freaking right. the last three months or whatever. Like, and then they get mad at me because I, you know, they didn't, I didn't pass them, you know, but, you know, to go along, uh, to add to what you just said, like, yeah, you got your black belt in a year, but people don't know, you know, it's not like we're handing out black belts here because we don't have that many black belts, you know, right. most people leave before they get to that point because it gets hard, right? right. You know, we, like you said, we live, you know, it, and we live in a day and age where uh, we want everything now because everything's at our fingertips and we can get right. information now. Right. So instant gratification, right? Right, right. Once it gets hard, you know, people are like, you know, ah, this is, this might not be for me. Right. And that's fine. It's not for everyone. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I'd rather weed the people out that are not serious. Right? right. So, but you know, we don't have a lot of black belts, but you got your black belt in a year, but you were at the dojo all the time. You were studying all the time. You knew your stuff, you know what I mean? You, I don't think you, you score lower than, what, a 94 or 96, you know what I mean? 
out of a hundred, you know what I mean? So it's not like, you know, everybody gets their black bone a year here. That's not the case, you know. I, so. And you threw curveballs at me. Yeah, so, and so, some people, you know, sometimes some people it takes longer, and that's okay. You know, everybody goes at their own pace. Um, you know, uh, I, I've I awarded black belts to, uh, you know, two juniors that were in martial arts. Uh, they were doing it for seven years. You know what I mean? They they just took their time. You know, which is fine. You know, yeah. everyone learns at their own pace. Um, so why why nimpo? You know, you've done other martial arts before, right? You've done Kung Fu. You've done Aikido. Uh, did you do boxing too? I did boxing. Okay. Um, why, why did you stick with Nimpo? Well, I felt, in my opinion, Nimpo was very well-rounded. So it wasn't just, well, I like the well-roundedness of it too. Like, you know, you have, you're able to do stuff on the stand-up. You know, you had throwing in there, you had choking in there, you had ground fighting in there. You had like, you had a whole range of everything. You have weapons, like you have all that stuff. Right. And but a lot of people say, you know, because the real name, the real name is Nimpo nowadays, is the modern name. The old name is Ninjitsu. So everyone thinks like we're dressing up like ninjas and playing with swords all the time and stuff. But they don't know, like, you know, we do, you know, we do the throwing like judo. We do grappling like BJJ, mm -hmm. um, you know. Not exactly like them because, you know, they, they train for different purposes, like tournaments and things like that. You know, ours is a little different. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, we do a lot of different stuff. And, and we do the weapons training, the weapons defense training, you know, defend from knife or firearm, things like that. So a lot of people have this Hollywood misconception on what we do here because of movies. And we, right. what we do here is far from that. Like, yeah, we, we do... Uh, talk about the old traditional stuff because that stuff is cool and I like to uphold tradition I like history but it's not like we're running around in ninja masks you know uh, trying to climb roofs and things like that that's not what it is right no and I agree with that um, one thing who do, first of all who doesn't want to be a ninja like right. <laughs> there, there, everything is like ninja tactics on marketing or, or ninja tactics it's like everybody's like I mean, they got a motorcycle named after Ninja. Come on. Right. You know what I mean? So everybody wants to be a ninja, like, you know, because um, ninjas are cool. I mean, that's, right. sorry, they are. But, um, but what we study is it's, it's more, it's not, it's, it's more to how to overcome any challenge. If you really look at Nimpo, it's how do you overcome anything? Right. How do you overcome yourself? And that's, and that's what people don't get. Um, and I try to explain it to them and I don't think it registers. Right. It's martial arts is here. Right. Not, not here. Right. right. It's, it's all about who's the smartest in the room and how are you going to overcome adversity? Right. And that's what I always try to teach my students, especially my younger ones. Um, I, the, the younger ones are easier to teach because they're a sponge and, mm -hmm. and they, and they hold on to what they really hold on to what you say right. Where adults. They're, they're more difficult because adults, they're already set in their ways. Right. So I always say it's, it's easier to mold a child than it is to, to fix a broken adult. So you got to mold your children early into what you want them to be. Right. Right. So, um, where was I going with this? I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? We're talking about the, um, <laughs> yeah, you got me on that too. <laughs> um, We're talking about, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's up here. So, um, you know, so it's, it's all about who's, you know, who's the smartest in that, in that room or how do I overcome this problem? That's what martial arts is all, all about. It's not who can punch the hardest or kick the hardest or, you know, throw the hardest. It's, it's not, it's not, that's, that's secondary. Right. Yeah. When it comes to that, and it's, what a lot of people think, you know, understand is, we're not, the, the, the most effective martial artist is being able to prevent a fight from happening in the first place. Correct. It has nothing to do with the physical side of things. Is, is how, can you talk your way out of a confrontation? Right. You know, and, and, 
that that is what the essence of martial like you don't you want to you want to end every alter any kind of altercation in a peaceful way you know forget about the physical side how about ending it peacefully are you going to be the bigger person to be able to walk away from a fight can you do that that's the true spirit of a martial artist it's not about anybody can fight right you know? and and a, and a martial artist can easily take on anyone who's inexperienced easily it's not about that that's an ego thing you know it's all about can you walk away from it and end the end conversation in a peaceful manner and and most people don't understand that either yep and that's something that we are very big on is how do you use your mind um you know and and that all comes within all in, in the techniques as well right you know? so and that's what i like about it so basically nimpo is the bee's knees yes <laughs> it is the anti to everything else <laughs> um and i'm just uh i had some uh, some other questions I wanted to ask you, so I'm just pulling them up. That's why I'm not looking at that yet. Um, so, you know, adults are busy, right? So, you know, they got they got jobs, they got boyfriends, they got girlfriends, they got wives, they got husbands, they got kids. You know, uh, they got other sports. You know, they're. I think I think adults are more busier now than ever before, because mm -hmm. and I, I think a lot has to do with technology and things like that and things that are available to us, you know, nowadays, and different activities and things like that. So how can adults reach their black belt goals with all the stuff they have going on? Well, it, you know what, and it's funny you said that you know everybody's busy. Okay, well, are we just busy, or are you being are you busy being productive? See, when somebody tells me they're they're busy, right? I'm just like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, because when I was going up through the ranks, you know, um, when I was just like a regular student, um, you know, I was going to the dojo three, four times a week. On top of that, I was uh, running a company. It wasn't my company, but I was I was pretty much running it, um, traveling for work. Uh, a lot. And also I started this on the mm -hmm. side and I'll still go into the dojo three times a week training for a couple hours. And so, you were going like what, an hour and a half each way. Right. And I was driving an hour and a half each way. Yeah. So, um, so do you think it has to do with time management? I think it has to do with time management and priorities. Okay. Um, especially with like because like nowadays everybody can binge watch things or you know people are, are more so if people put their phones down and got and let the social media sit they would get a lot more stuff done the problem is there's too many distractions so you t what you need to do is as far as trying to get over that time management thing and start prioritizing your stuff and if it's important to you, you put it on that on that list on a high as a high priority part of the list. TV isn't a priority. Video games isn't a priority. Freaking, um, you may even have to cut an hour or two out of your sleep. I mean, you don't. Do you really need ten hours of sleep? No. You know what I mean? Cut off three or two. You know, and that and that two hours of straight focus priority time will propel you so far in your journey. That you have no. It would make no sense. Right. You know, but people are so scatterbrained and are so all over the place on what it is that they're trying to do that they they're busy, but they're getting nothing done. And that's the issue. Uh, I I haven't had time to study. Okay, well you could have when you were on the, using the bathroom, you could have had your book in there and read a couple of things. Right. You know, or if you're going to run there and you're sitting there, you're waiting. I, I had my books with me everywhere I went. You know, so if I'm sitting in a lobby somewhere, sitting like a doctor's office, I know I'm going to go to the doctor's office. I know I'm probably going to sit there for at least a half hour before I even get triaged. Right. I would have my books with me and I would sit in a lobby and I would study. Right. Like you have to learn how to, to in, implement things into your life that's going to help propel you towards your goal. And most people don't do that. I have some, most people don't even know how to set goals and, and be goal oriented because they don't teach that in school. Right. You know? There's a lot of things they don't teach in school that should be taught in school. 
And that's the problem in the school system now. Like how many people know how to balance a checkbook? You know, like for real. Or financial planning. <laughs> right. You know, uh, you know? I see a lot of, you know, young adults, they, they don't know anything about financial planning. They get themselves like in a hole right out of college, you know, and they're stressed out because they have these huge college loans and things like that. And, you know, I, I feel bad for them. I really do. Yeah. And it's, it's only getting worse. Yeah. You know, and with the, the way the internet is now, like young people have the ability way, I mean, I mean, way before they become adults to even do things to create a life and, and wealth that, you know, that we never had when we were kids. Yeah. I mean, you got 13 year old millionaires who sell bow ties. It's insane. Right. You know what they're doing, what they can do with the internet, but they're not teaching that at school. The only way for them to learn that is actually from their parents. You know, if you got parents who are who are very success minded and they're teaching their kids those same things, their kids are going to have that same pattern later. So that you made me uh, think of a story. Uh, didn't you uh, teach William about? having a business in the winter time he was he was like shoveling snow or something oh, yeah, yeah. Like that. what tell that story real quick well we had got a call from someone to well first we were he was outside doing our um our our driveway right shoveling snow out this of that. Was last year right because we didn't really get snow this year right right it was the, yeah. the previous year that we had snowfall right and um so he our neighbor because we had just moved into our new house so um the neighbor came out and he was like i'll shovel your snow or shovel your driveway and stuff so she's like okay go you know go ahead or whatever so he goes up and you know lets you know he's done and uh she's like i'll give you a couple dollars or whatever he's like oh no i'll do it for free but you know she's like oh i'll pay you so he goes over and you know thinking he's gonna get a couple dollars she gave him a five so he was like oh wow like he was he was pumped he was like man i got five dollars for doing like a 10 minute job right you know so he comes back in and then we ended up getting a um a call for to help someone else with their driveway so i'm like william you want to do it and he's like yeah he's like he's like well how much you want to charge and then i looked at william and said how much are you going to charge he's like for the driver that size i'll do it for 30 dollars." the guy was like okay so i drove him across bel-air to go shovel his driveway shoveled it up the guy came out gave him a 30 bucks okay then he's like, man, like he got excited. He's like, he's making 20 minutes. He made $30. Like that's $60 an hour. Right. You know? So he's like, oh, well, heck, let's go. He come back down and he started walking across to every person's house in our neighborhood. I was like, I'll shovel your yard for $5. Shovel sure. your yard, shovel your thing for $5. And he made like, like 70, 80 bucks. I was like, man, like, see, I see, like, look, look at that. He was excited about it. He got a couple people that said no, like in a row. He was like, man, I don't want to, you know, right. <laughs> he got rejected a couple of times. I'm like, dude, don't worry about it. Just keep, keep on going, you know, That's just go sales. do it, That's <laughs> you know, yeah. but he made himself some money all because of that. Like it, you know, so he knows that he can make money. Right. So that's teaching him responsibility. Right. That's teaching him to be an entrepreneur. Teaching them about rejection, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, you know, all these different things and just just shoveling snow that he's learning, you know? Yep. Um, so, uh, how can, you know, your, a couple of your kids, you know, were doing martial arts here and stuff like that. So how, how can, uh, parent help their child with their martial arts training because a lot of a lot of parents are i think sometimes they think they can't help them because they don't know martial arts right i mean because they don't take it right, um, right. what are some things they can do to to help with their uh, their kids uh in martial arts training if their kids take martial arts be active in it and I, what i mean by be active in it is while they're training get off your freaking phone right like you, you need to really pay attention to them while they're in there because a lot of times they may be doing something and they, hey, they might do something like really, really good and they get a compliment about it and then look over at you and you're on your phone. Right. You know, like 
be active in the activities that they're doing. And so, a lot of times. So I just want to cut you off. So uh, there is a method to my madness. So, um, you know, Sydney does all the intros here, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, you know, her and I have an agreement where if, if, you know, if you come in for a free lesson or whatever, and the parent uh, is on their phone, we, we kindly ask them, you know, to put it down and, and watch, you know what I mean? Because it is important that they're into what their kids are doing. Right. However, if they're defiant and they continue to be on their phone after we tell them, hey, please don't be on your phone, that's a huge red flag. And we know, like, that's, you know, they're probably not going to be a good fit here. Right. And we don't, you know, we don't accept them, you know, right. I mean? because we know that, you know, they just want to just drop their kid off and not really be into what they're doing. Right. What's more important is your, is your social media is whatever it is is going on in your phone more important than what's going on in front of you right now. Right. As far as your child is concerned. That's my thing. It's like, pay attention to what your children are doing because they're a lot of times they, they're going to look at you for like that, that follow up of like, am I doing things good? You want to, and they look over at you and they're like, and you look at them, you give them like a thumbs up, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Then they get excited about that. And they're like, well, I'm going to do something else again because I want, I want to make my parents proud because they're watching me. Right. You know? And when you're sitting there on your phone or not paying attention to what's going on or maybe even like socializing or whatever, and you know, you can socialize a little bit, but at least be active and watching what's going on because your kids are looking at you for validation in what it is that they're doing. And, and that's a big and integral part of, for them to even one, want to stay doing what they're doing and, and they're going to have fun and be happy about it because one, two, they're making you proud. You know what I mean? So it's going to give them that incentive to be like, all right, well, they're happy. They're smiling at me, encouraging me, saying I'm doing a good job. I'm going to stick with this, you know? And when, it, and when they're also training for like belt testing or whatever, or like when they're at home, like pull the book out and just like ask them questions out of the book. It's like, okay, show me a front snap kit or right. all right, well, what is this in Japanese? And like, just go over some of their stuff with them. That's like helping them reinforce that studying protocol at home. But then you're also active in their activities and they're going to want to be like, they're going to want to be like active with you in this journey, right. you know? And then once they get their black belt, they're going to look at you and be like, wow, you helped me get this. Like you, you helped me. Right. You know, and, and I, that's a, a huge thing to me. Yep. Yeah. Um, one of my students, uh, Caleb, um, his, his mom uh, goes over with him, uh, all the Japanese. He, so he knows every single test. He knows the Japanese to uh, all his techniques, right? So I know she's there with him, you know, with the book, you know, going over it with him. Because we don't require the kids to learn the Japanese. That's, a, that's an adult thing, right? So, but this kid, you know, he's, I forget how old he is. He might be six, maybe. I don't know. Um, but, you know, the kid knows how to speak Japanese. You know what I mean? And it's great. It's, it's like, you know, uh, and, you know, I'm sure they don't spend like all day doing that or all afternoon. I'm sure she just does it, you know, maybe you know, 30 minutes a day or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. Probably not even that, you know? It doesn't take much. Right. It doesn't take much. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, uh, let me see if uh, we have any viewers that open up to some questions from the viewers if uh, anybody has any. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, uh, John Lamar said, I'm busy, LOL. Well, John, <laughs> so was I, I <laughs> yeah. and I still yeah. uh, came to class. Yeah. I, I was at my nine to five. I uh, was running this school afterwards, and I was still driving an hour and a half to train one way uh, three times a week. So... So yeah, John's, yep. John's one of my students, by the way, everyone. Um, it's we're allowed to give him a hard time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, any questions by anyone?
And were you, were you able to hear me okay with the, uh, without the mic? Uh, like right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds way better. Okay. So we, hi Elizabeth. So Elizabeth is uh, one of my uh, Krav Maga students and her daughter uh, also takes it. Oh yeah, I remember that. Um, any questions, any questions? All right, well, I guess uh, I guess nobody's asking questions, so uh, I guess we'll we'll cap it off at that. So uh, thank you for for spending time with us tonight. Um, you no know, problem. Yeah, um, that, it's funny because like I didn't think that this conversation was going to take this long. You know, me either. <laughs> we just got it. We just got it. Fast. Went with it. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, thank you. And, um, obviously if you need anything from me, let me know. Um, I, I really want to do an advanced lesson, uh, with some people soon. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know, uh, when that is. I should say, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it via zoom since, uh, we have to isolate <laughs> <laughs> this whole isolation thing. Yeah. Yeah, huh. I, I, I have I have my own opinion on that, but I'm not going to elaborate because I might make people mad. <laughs> but uh, all right. So thanks. Thanks, Errol. Uh, and uh, sayonara. Sayonara, Sensei.